everyone, my name is Jacqueline and welcome back to my channel. So before we get started, let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered how to supercharge your life, boost your productivity, and make every day count? Well, if you've ever wondered any of those things, that's what this video is here for. Today we are going to be exploring the three books that helped me shift my mindset to help me reach my goals. So let's just get straight into it. So first up, we have Atomic Habits by James Clear. So you guys have probably heard of this book. This is the first productivity self-help book that I read. And even though I read it a few years back, at least still use some of the tips that I learned from this book to this day so I'm going to be sharing my favorite tips with you guys first up is that small habits make a big difference basically this tip is just like the title of the book atomic habits which is kind of like really really small habits that accumulate into larger ones over time think about it this way if you do something like a very little bit every day you won't really notice it on the daily but over time it'll actually end up being a lot I know that this is kind of vague so for example, I'm currently applying for internships and this is something that I've been really, really putting off but let's just say that I put in 20 minutes every day. So this may not seem like a lot, like I would probably not even get through an entire application in 20 minutes or maybe I would do like potentially one. Over the course of a month, this will actually rack up to 10 hours which is something that I definitely would not be able to do in one sitting. That is tip number one. Now for tip number two, picture this you have a lots of dreams and goals but you're struggling to take the first step well that's where the magic of identity driven habits comes in so first of all what is an identity driven habit clear identifies three levels of habits which i will explain briefly right now so first up we have goal driven habits so this is something that you do in order to reach a goal for example this is like studying for exam like after the exam you're not going to be studying for that material anymore next up we have system driven goals these are goals which are driven by the processes such as the act of studying itself lastly we have identity driven habits these are behaviors that we do because they allow us to become the person that we want to be and these are the actions that get us there clear states that it's really important to create identity driven habits rather than goal based ones because they are the habits that are not finite and you will continue to do them even after you reach your goals so here's another example for you to contextualize it a little bit more let's just say you want to become a reader but you always say that you're too busy to pick up a book and read so in order to become a reader just start small by reading one page every day if that's too much so start with the sentence but i can assure you that you will probably be reading more than one sentence of a book because it's typically the act of just starting to read that's hard and not actually reading you'll eventually be able to become the reader that you've always wanted to be so just taking small steps to begin and reducing the friction of just starting the task definitely helps rather than setting the goal to finish one book which might allow you to finish one book but never pick up another book again the shift in mindset will ensure that you keep on evolving no matter what book you're on so to sum up this point by setting up identity based goals you will be able to become the person that you've always aspired to be one small habit at a time so lastly one of my favorite concepts from this book is getting 1% better every day. Similar to the last point, even though 1% may not seem like a lot, 1% out of 100, that's like 1 out of 100, which is so small. But if you continue improving 1% over the course of a year, it actually results to an increase of 37 times the amount of improvement as you had since you started the task. So let's take a look at this visually. So here's a chart that shows the potential growth. It may seem really slow at the beginning, but over time, results will definitely compound. And remember that patience is key, and even if you're not seeing results at the moment, keep going at it if you enjoy doing it and you will eventually see them so to wrap up this first book atomic habits my little tip for you is to subscribe to james clear's email list so he'll be sending an email to you every thursday with three ideas from him two ideas from other people and one question for you to reflect on and i've been subscribed to this for quite a while and every week i always really look forward to getting this email because it always puts me back on track and helps me reflect on everything i've done during the week and they're really a good reminder for me to reflect on my personal goals and how I'm doing at the moment and how I can do better. So the second book that I have for you guys, I actually have it with me right here, is called 4,000 Weeks Time Management for Mortals by Oliver Berkman. So basically this book underscores the importance of focusing only on tasks that truly matter to you and also setting boundaries 
to eliminate the unnecessary. In the modern world, we're often overwhelmed by endless to-do lists and constant demands on our attention. So he talks about essentialism, which teaches us to discern between what's essential and what's not, which allows us to prioritize our tasks effectively. Let's get into a few main points that he talks about. So first up, Berkman advocates for the one thing principle, which suggests that a small number of tasks or efforts often lead to the majority of our desired outcomes, which is really similar to the 80-20 rule. So by focusing on this one thing, we can maximize our productivity and impact while minimizing our time spent on less important activities. Next point is to take up a hobby just for fun. So nowadays, people often do self-care things to improve themselves when they rest. So for example, going to a workout or like prepping for that marathon, which is something I'll never be doing, but those are all things to reach goals later on in life. So Berkman advocates that it's really important to find a hobby or passion that you do just for fun with no results in mind. Just expect to not be super successful or to be able to fail in it. He says that it's better to be mediocre at it as you'll have no expectations on how you're doing. And although this may seem a little bit counterintuitive as it's not visibly improving yourself, at the moment over time it'll actually be able to boost your productivity in the long run and help prevent burnout and improve the quality of your life. So Berkman ends off the book with a list of questions at the end for you to reflect on and I'm gonna ask two of them here just so you can have a little reflection on yourself. So first up is in in which areas of life are you still holding back until you feel like you know what you're doing? I think that this question is really important and really interesting because you'll never have all the skills that you need to start something new. Even though that you may think that everyone else has everything figured out, everyone is in fact doing it and just learning as they go all the time. So here is your sign from me just to start now even though you don't really know what you're doing. Like for example, I am starting this YouTube channel and I high key don't know too much about it and I'm just doing it because it's really fun and I really enjoy editing so it's something that I am having lots of fun doing. And and like I don't really care about the end results. It's just something that I do for fun. Even though I don't know how to do a lot of things like for example motion graphics or like making the absolute best YouTube video, I think that just working on it over time is super helpful. So second question for you is how would you spend your days differently if you didn't care so much about seeing your actions reach fruition? I think that this second question is also really really important and I love it so much because I think it's really important to think about why you do the things that you do like do you really enjoy them are you doing them because of some external factors and do you really need to still be doing them so i think it's just a really good question and i hope you guys enjoyed these two as well so now moving on to the third book we have the courage to be disliked by chiro kimishi so this book is a little bit different than all the other books that i've read in the past as it takes the form as a conversation between a philosopher and a young man who disputes a lot of his points i gotta say that i picked up this book from a bookstore when i was in paris this summer and i had no clue what it was going to be about but i saw the name title of the book and i was like okay i feel like i could use some of this in my life so does anyone else here care a little bit too much about what other people think about them? I would definitely recommend reading this book if you're similar to me in this way as this book really helps you think about why you think what you think and why we should free ourselves from our past experiences, doubts, and expectations from others. So let me get into the important points of this book now. So the first point is to deny trauma. I gotta be real, when I first read this, I was really skeptical of this book and what it was going to be about because I was like, who is telling everyone to deny their trauma? I don't think that's healthy for anyone's mental health. So I think that is really important to reflect and understand where the author is coming from and interpret this as learning from our pasts and just not living in them. So rather than dwelling in the past and thinking of what you could have done differently in the past or things that could have happened differently, it's important to take action now and take advantage of the present moment. So the next idea is that all problems are interpersonal problems. Have you ever felt feelings of inferiority and think that I can never do this or that? Well, these feelings often get in the way and prevent us from starting what we really want to do. And why is this? It's not that we're scared to fail. It's that we're often afraid of being seen as failing by other people which makes it an interpersonal problem because if you were to fail on your own with no one else's judgment would you be really scared of failing probably not so here's a little story from the book that i thought explained this concept really well there is a young man who dreams of becoming a novelist but he never starts because he is always too busy though this is his excuse 
The real reason is that he wants to have the possibility of I can do it if I try and avoid criticism or rejection if his work is not well received. I thought that this quote was really important because similar to me, I was like, I could start a YouTube channel potentially, but I was like, if I never try or never do it and just say that I'm too busy, then I'll never actually be able to do what I want and create the life that I want to live. Third is to discard other people's tasks. You are responsible for living your life, not what someone else wants for you. So don't look to satisfy the expectations of others and go pursue that thing that you've always wanted to do but are too scared of doing. Lastly, here is one quote that I was really interested in reading especially if you've ever felt jealously about someone else's life look no matter how much you want to be why you cannot be reborn as him you are not why it's okay for you to be you however i'm not saying it's fine to be just as you are if you are unable to feel really happy then it's clear that things aren't right just as they are you've got to put one foot in front of the other and not stop so go embrace yourself and become the best version of yourself and not someone else okay so that wraps up the last book that i read i hope you guys found some really good insights and i hope you guys read these books as well so here are some key takeaways just to wrap up everything so first up is create small habits and work on something a little bit every day just to get one percent better second is to focus your time on only the most important tasks and learn how to say no to everything else lastly we have free yourself from the need for universal approval and embrace your true self. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you read these books as well and enjoy them as much as I did. Please leave your favorite books that changed your life in the comments down below or any books that you are looking forward to reading as I'm always down to read more books. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye bye!